Okay. Oh my god. Yeah, I saw. I saw half. Oh of no, no, no! This is okay. This I, is I'm why saying, we need saw both. Half of the movie. This is an all, all hands on deck review, Alan. Oh all hands on deck because oh, we have to talk about this movie. This movie. We this have movie. to talk about this movie, Alan. <laughs> this is. Alan, we're doing it. Yeah. We're doing Sad it, man. Alan. We're doing it. We're talking I'm, about. I'm just saying uh, up front. I only saw half of the movie, and there's there's a reason why. <laughs> Well, we'll get into it. Let's yeah. talk about The People's Joker. What is The People's Joker? It is a feature-length film. Uh, it's directed by and starring Vera Drew, who is a trans person, a trans woman. And uh, Vera uh, directed, starred in this movie. It's autobiographical. So you see... Uh, the story of Vera as a young boy, then transitioning into a woman and is obsessed with the Joker and all things Batman. This movie was the point of some controversy, actually, when the, the film was supposed to premiere at a major film festival and then was and then was basically dropped because um there it was dropped because this a media conglomerate i'm saying a media conglomerate i'm pretty sure it was warner brothers sent a cease and desist um I, I don't know if this is true there's the controversy about it is it was supposed to be at the toronto international film festival in 2022 so this movie's been sitting on a shelf for a while uh it was it was because of this so-called um uh angry letter cease and desist the movie did not premiere at toronto uh but it is now available in commercial release it played actually at outfest in 2023 which is a gay film festival in los angeles so this is the history of this movie and let me just say while the story is sort of this the story is almost like this ADD thing where it's like back and forth between like the mom and their relationship and this young boy who becomes Vera drew version of the Joker. Um, and it's mixed with all this Batman imagery. So it's like a fantasy in this boy's head, this young boy's head who then transitions and becomes basically the trance Joker. And I, I don't know why, the WB felt compelled to shut this film down. It might have also been, it might have also been a way to promote the movie. Yeah. I have a theory though, but I'll let okay, you. we'll get into the theory. So the story is kind of bounces all over the place of like the, the story of a young boy transitioning to become Vera Drew, who's the filmmaker of the film. So it's autobiographical. I don't want to say it's like a documentary, but it's like it's autobiographical with bouncing between scenes and then this sort of mixture of this trance Joker. Now, the only reason we're even talking about this is because it tangentially uh, connects to uh, DC, Batman, the Joker, and characters from uh, Batman comic books. And the reason that this film got a lot of attention is not necessarily on the festival circuit, not necessarily because of the connection to Batman and whatnot, but because it's it's a trance coming of queer age story might be the best way to put it. Right, Alan? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a terrible movie. It'll, it might be on my list as one of the worst films of the year. And the reason is this. It's not because of the story itself. It's because of the way that the story is told. It seems like the entire movie was shot. Most of the movie is shot against a green screen. And you see like crowds or whatever. It looks so cheap. It looks like one of those asylum movies where they had no money. And it's so like overly done with like digital effects and this. It's trying to like impress with these effects but it's the worst version of special effects you've ever seen. This reminds me of something that you might see on Tim and Eric. You ever see the Tim and Eric awesome? The Tim and Eric show was like, they'd bring on these people that they'd find on Craigslist that were just 
awful and untalented. That's what this is. Now, it's not as if there isn't a good trans story that could be told. This one isn't it. The only person that could probably, the only people that could probably relate to this is possibly other trans persons. Mm -hmm. But, um, and of course, everyone's, you know, we're going to be called anti-trans because of giving this movie a bad review. It's a trap because the movie is terrible. And, and if you don't believe me, watch the trailer for this film. I might be able to find the trailer. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know if yeah, I want to play watch the trailer. It. It's not, not going to play the trailer, but watch it. It's on the film threat trailers channel. I just want people to see it, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I dislike this movie for many reasons that you didn't mention. Uh, I think we disliked it for different reasons. Maybe that's okay. Best okay, best so it. okay, but like my reasons are: it looks cheap, it's mm -hmm. super lecturing. I mean, can I go on checklist? I don't know. Do we? Can we give like? Did we review this on Film Threat yet? I don't think we have. Here, let, let me let me we tell need you. Need to get a review on Film yeah. Threat. That, let, let me. You yeah, let me get my. For, are you going to write the review? Uh, I will probably have to if I can. If if if, uh, link if that screener if that screener because I think we have one one final view on that screener. So no, I'm no, but it expires that. today. Ah, uh, okay. You're gonna finish okay. it, Alan, and I want to just, hear just let me say. You. Just let me okay, say. Okay, okay. Right, so, go ahead, go ahead. So, uh, um, in terms of the cheap quality of it, I I'll say this: um, it's an indie film. Uh, that's what we do. We we uplift indie films. I didn't necessarily. Ha I, I appreciated the innovative innovative. <laughs> The innovation uh, of taking of using the green screen in this manner uh, to tell their story, because, look, if you want to get your movie made, you've got to make it yourself. And that's what these guys did. Uh, that's what Vera did. Sorry, these people did. Uh, and uh, and uh, and I appreciate that. Uh, I'll, I'll give you my theory on why it was uh, pulled from Toronto. Um, there are several animated scenes of the original Batman movies in this in this film. My guess is they did, they weren't originally animated and that they were those scenes were in the movie. And I think that's why Warner Brothers pulled it, because they didn't have the rights to to show those right. uh, those clips right. in the movie. And so they were all animated. Uh, there's a lot of animations movie. Uh, there are a lot of voices. Uh, Maria Bamford lends a voice. Scott Ackerman, speaking of uh, Adult Swim there. Uh, Bob Odenkirk, Tim Heidecker. They're, they're all lending voices or appearing in this movie. So it's got some cred behind it. My biggest problem is uh, I don't know what it is about gay comedy, but it's not funny. And the thing that's that uh, led me to this this idea or this opinion is that uh, this this movie highlights UCB, Upright Citizens Brigade here in L.A., uh, as a lot of the inspiration for the comedy. And um, and and this movie reflects that. Uh, perfectly uh, this movie as a comedy is like going to a ucb show done by their students and not by the the professionals right um, because because this movie the comedy is all about uh vera drew the uh, the joker and the young joker just talking as if they're on stage coming up with witty it, things to say yes to constantly feels, comment on stuff and it is like the only people who find it funny is is Vera Drew and and her her co star. Um, for the rest of us, you know, I've been to these long form improv shows, which is why I hate long form improv shows. And it's people standing on stage talking and trying to come up with funny things to say constantly all the time, without even trying to develop some kind of story that the audience cares about. And that's why long form improv comedy is not popular amongst the pop, the masses. And this movie is that movie where it's just, it's for improvisers. Uh, this movie, uh, Dick's the musical exact same problem. Yes. Uh, I, I think even bros suffers from that problem. Yes. Which tells me um, to the LGBT community out there, you really need to reconsider what you consider comedy or the comedy that you want to bring to the masses because uh -huh. this is not that comedy and it just reflects badly on your genre. And so I will it's, say that about this. Yes. And the, the thing is, is we're going to get to your chat comments and questions momentarily, but um, it got very good ratings from critics. And so when this happens, when you overpraise a say LGBTQ themed film, when you overpraise it, 
and and say it's awesome and then a mainstream audience goes to see it and it's objectively a terrible movie that further erodes not only trust in the critics but gay cinema in general just as a look there are there are really great lgbtq films there, there are great ones that exist. I, and I don't even consider necessarily John Waters films to be gay films. He makes movies, comedies for everybody. And that is the problem with current day LGBTQ cinema is it only is looking to appeal to the, the intended audience, which is infinitesimal. It's small narrow audience and even that audience doesn't support these films if you want to make a gay theme film make it so that other people can actually relate to it and i agree with you alan about your take on it about it being mm -hmm. it feels like a one-man show by one man i'm not yeah. that's not an insult well, it's, like it's a, a it's a long form improv show that's what it felt like and it's just oh my god like there are layers of awful i haven't seen for years and just to be clear while we support and talk about indie film on this show we're pretty clear about giving honest reviews. And in that sense, like just because something is indie doesn't mean that it's, that it's good. It just doesn't, it just doesn't. So there's, I mean, look, if you look at filmthreat.com, we re there's reviews three to five reviews daily is pretty normal on the average mm -hmm. around three, five reviews on a big day. And when we're covering, when we're covering film festivals, it can be up to 20 different reviews every day. Okay. So um, we try to filter. So when we're talking about this stuff on YouTube, we're, we're, we're telling you about the ones that we feel are the best or the ones that worth your attention and that you're able to see mm -hmm. the people's Joker is in theaters. Okay. This yeah. movie has opened in theaters, and it has legit celebrities in it, legit celebrities and names as part of it. And I don't I mean, is this going to evolve into like a Rocky Horror Picture Show where people are going to be mocking it? That's the only way I can justify seeing it in a theater. It's just so it's just like it, it, I it, look, it, it does it to me. It does not do the trans community any favors. I'm sorry. It doesn't. It's a just a solidly bad work. Let, let me say this about the quality of the film in terms of the green screening and all that stuff. Um, if it, if the story was better, uh, I wouldn't have minded as much. Uh, in fact, uh, in fact, uh, if you are a filmmaker who wants to make your first movie with no money, this is a good route to go. Yes. But again, the story itself, it doesn't lend itself to it. And therefore, you know, it just makes cheap look even more cheap. It look yeah exactly the cheap look of it because we've seen movies that kind of mm -hmm. have this kind of cheap look. We've yeah. seen indie movies that use that as hey, a hey, style. Yeah. And you realize that it's the, okay, and 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 also you realize it's a necessity sometimes. You just don't right. have the money, money wise. Yeah, uh, you know, look, Bottoms was I think the last LGBT comedy that you and I both really loved. We really uh, loved it. it. Had nothing yeah. to do with it being LGBT, or it was basically a lesbian. Um, yeah, it was a lesbian uh, teen sex comedy, um, but but, but the jokes were there. The jokes, the jokes were, were there. It was corrupt. very well done, and it was funny, and it appealed to people who are not gay. I mean, look, I I feel like look, I I I don't care that this movie exists. It's fine, but know that it's a limited audience, and I I don't know is anybody going to walk out of this movie and say that was awesome? I'm so glad I saw it. I think there's one person, Vera Drew. Let's go to your comments. So this this movie is for me. It's a zero out of ten on my <laughs> list for the worst of the year, and has nothing to do with it being a gay. It's just a bad movie. It's a bad movie. Alan, I'll give it a one. Uh, I, <laughs> You'll give it a so, one. So technically, I liked it infinitely more than you did. So. 